Hello, uh, I'm Lewis, I'm an undergraduate here at Secondary University. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about education and technology, um, which is pretty surprising, seeing as I'm not a lecturer. I should probably be giving some lectures to talk about, but I'll talk about it anyway. So, probably, so you're asking, what is that? Uh, it can be basically anything, you know, it's technology that is used in the process to develop human cap capability. So it really can be anything from hardware to software, it can be your iPad, it can be Blackboard, it can be Word, because you do, you do your work in Word. So, probably thinking, how far back does this go, because technology has been around for a short amount of time in comparison to how far back things actually go. Uh, it actually goes back to the early 1900s with educational films and uh, stuff like that, you know, they brought in, people took this information, they recorded it, and then they showed it in their, in their early day lectures, I mean, when this technology was first available. Also, this, uh, there's this mechanical teaching device uh, that people pressed, they took uh, feedback from this, they had this little device, and they just played around with it, and they could, they could learn things from this. So then, in the 50s, uh, program instructions uh, was introduced, so early and often, so people would stay interested, and that keeps you interested, and I'm doing it now, just so program instruction uh, soon came programmed learning. Uh, this was a, a theory uh, which was soon changed and became an application into learning. So what did Rob do? Well, basically he defined that instruction was to do with uh, behavioural attributes and trying to modify people's uh, behaviour, whereas learning is teaching people new skills and uh, teaching facts. So why did he use this? Because it's all about hands-on learning. If you take things into your own hands and you do have hands-on learning, it's far more effective than standard uh, you know, lecturing. So I'll show you this little diagram here. It shows that hands-on learning, you can take in 90% of the information that's hearing, reading, such as lecturing, you take in 5 to 15%. So this soon progressed into computer-assisted instruction. So I've just changed two words again. What is the difference in this? Well, this is just applying computers. That's all it is. It's just you taking computers and you're using them to your advantage to help teach. So both these theories, this programmed instruction and this computer-assisted instruction, just makes e-learning, which is where we are today. Back in the day, it was introduced in about the 70s or 80s, but it's super great. You know, it wasn't so great to start because technology wasn't so great. But nowadays, it's really it's quite a powerful tool. So e-learning, we're up to date now, we're where we are. What makes it so much better than normal learning though? I'm trying to get this across. It's the fact that we're brought up on computers really. Because if you take the average student, he's in lectures four hours a day, he's probably typing up notes. He's probably doing a little bit of social networking or whatever. And he goes home and he does a little bit of assignment. So he's spending about six hours a day on his laptop or technology on his phone. It doesn't matter really what you're on. But I'm about, I'm about to blow your mind. <laughs> uh, computer. That's a quarter of a day. And we're not using it. You don't really use this technology enough. Well, I don't think we're using this technology enough to you for this learning. There's benefit after benefit. It is more cost efficient, I think, anyway, to do this e-learning because you don't have to you don't have to have space in a, a campus because people can just do it at home. And you, do, you know you don't have to employ lecturers. Uh, we'll go back. There's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, location is another thing. Uh, location is another thing. Um, you could, I could be doing work at home. I could be working and doing a little bit of programming. I could be doing some peer programming with a guy from New Zealand because I can just use Skype and I can do some screen capturing. He can see what I'm doing. He can see what he I can see what he's doing. So it really doesn't make a difference where you are in the world. You can do it, uh, work with anybody. Another thing is responsibility. Uh, this e-learning, I mean, you're not pushed, you aren't given the content. The content is there for you. You have to take your own, your own education into your own hands. So, you show that you're committed to your education by doing this e-learning. Um, another thing is online community. There's a far larger community online than there is just in the classroom. So, the, you know, the, the range of minds out there for getting different solutions to different problems is far greater. How about this? It's just an idea, for now at least. But do we really need lectures? We spend a lot of time, uh, you know, doing these lectures where all this content is available online anyway. So do we really need to turn up to these lectures? Well, I don't know. 
There are countless tutorials online. You can learn everything you well, I say everything. You can learn most things that you you have online uh, that you don't need to go to lectures for. Don't get offended, lecturers. It's just an idea. <laughs> but do we really need lecturers? <laughs> well, I got the uh, definition of a lecturer, and it's one who delivers lectures, especially professionally. <laughs> so I went on. I found what is a lecture? It's an exposition of a given subject delivered before an audience or a class as a purpose of instruction. Perhaps, maybe we don't need a lecturer, but more of a supervisor, just to make sure we, we're on the right track with this work, just to make sure that the content that we're looking at and the content that we're learning is relevant. Here's another thing. Uh, this is just something completely off topic, but why do we do programming exams on paper? I cannot, compile, I cannot compile a Java program on a paper. And then they say, oh, don't worry about syntactical errors. Well, it doesn't make sense in real life. That's me in an exam. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, okay? I will talk about the flip side. I will try to keep your jobs intact. But I guess access to uh, technology isn't available to everybody. So you could see a technological divide between the richer countries and possibly the richest people and the, you know, the less poor, uh, the less less rich people, the poorer people. So you can see really big split, and you can see the, the class, you know, the working class and the middle class, you can see that starting to play into effect once again, which I think could be a bad thing. Lots of time, it would take a lot of time to set up all this technology for one university, let alone all the universities. So it would take a lot of time, and also take a lot of money just to try and set this thing up in the first place. Also, dependency on technology is starting to get far more more of a serious thing because people, like I said, six hours a day, that doesn't sound too much if you're doing work, but do we want to really want to spend more time on this technology trying to learn? I don't know. Also, there's health risks uh, which link in with dependency. I mean, you could be, you could probably ruin your eyes by the time you're 30 if you're just staring at the screen for that kind of hours a day. So, there are these things. So, that's got me thinking. Should I research this further? Should I, should I take this idea that I've been given and try and take it a little bit further. So the other, you know, week back, I'm sure you all know, you will, well, second years now, you got your project booklets. So you're probably flicking through, well, I was anyway, and I saw, I saw a couple of projects like building a Lego robot with a remote control that you use from your phone. I thought that sounds absolutely fantastic. But, you know, could I use it in real world terms? So I kept reading, I kept reading. And I came across this one. It's 21st century university teaching. I thought, well, I'll read this one. A little bit further. And here's the definition for a few. I've heard it said by some uh, academics, I have said it myself, that a lec uh, lecture, or at least it should be, dead. This project will investigate new methods of teaching and improve the quality of teaching and learning at universities. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I think I'm going to go for this because it, it's really on what interests me. I'd really like to take this a little bit further and just investigate it. So. I think hopefully this time next year I'll be able to give another, another flash talk with far more depth of knowledge for what, I, what I've just talked about now. So I'll leave you with this, it's just a little joke, just to go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you guys want to talk to me in, uh, in the pub afterwards, I'll be there, so just uh, feel free to chat. I just have one question. Sure. You said that hands on learning will provide 90% of people taking it in. Have you taken into account the eight different intelligences defined by Howard Gardner? Or is that something that I could guide you through to look at? Uh, obviously, I'll look at this. Yeah, it, it, this was, it, it was just, I find this subject very interesting, and yeah. I spent a lot of time teaching in primary school in Denmark. Yeah. So maybe a little too general. Yeah. Love the topic, love your enthusiasm. Yeah. Very good. So yeah. just a suggestion of something okay. you could maybe look into. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take that into account. I'll uh, have a chat with you if you come to the pub, and yeah. uh, I'll take that into account, and I'll uh, certainly implement it in my project. Very good. Brilliant. Anybody else? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, um, caveat, I'm not a lecturer. Yeah. So the question is, why did you come to university? Why didn't you do it online? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, obviously the technology wasn't, you know, there. I, well, unless I've not researched it deeply enough, I couldn't see a university that was just applying complete online learning. I'm pretty sure the open university. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I know, perhaps the social aspect of the, you know, I like to go out a bit. But the lecture is more pubs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This voice from the union turned into a massive pub. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for listening. I uh, really enjoyed this. So, thank you very much.